Well, I got done with my run this morning, and I edited a video, and I've just kind of been lollygagging around, really, this morning. Chores are pretty well done, except for the rabbit, so I'll take you down, and we'll knock out some rabbit chores real quick this morning. Bunny boos are doing pretty good. Need to get everybody some more water. Let's go take a look at, see how the babies are doing. So these are the older of the two litters. Oh snap, you guys. What the heck? Okay, that's obviously not hers. I was all excited that maybe she finally had a litter. That looks like somebody that got over there from over here. So I'll get them back. So. Here's the younger one. And again, she's both like all black. This escapee is obviously from the older litter. So, a little fuzz butt can go back over here with everybody else. Yesterday, I had to move them back into the, the box because they kept hopping out. It was pretty warm, so I'm sure that had a little bit, but they could have been still latched on to Mama. But Tina's litter is the oldest, and then Cora's litter is the youngest. And Cora's first litter is actually the one that's outside. So it looks like she needs some water, so I better go down and fill up my bucket with some water. hot right now it's not too bad today but yesterday it got well up to 90 and so it seems like the girls aren't quite eating as much as they typically would uh, obviously you got to stay right on top of their water I'll probably fill up all their water bottles today as well as the dishes but they just don't seem to eat as much I've been giving them all uh, the grass hay I give them a good handful of that every day some of them eat it more than others but uh, the mamas I always try to top off their pellets. Um, my two bucks, I don't give them quite as much, just like maybe half of this, which they'll go through in a day easily. But I don't want them to get too fat on pellets alone. So I give them a lot of grass hay. And Ed, obviously, you know that he's not very good about eating all his. But Pat, he'll, he'll go through everything I give him. Uh, Krusty, the doe that hasn't had a litter yet, she will go through all of her grass hay. And she kind of goes through spurts where she'll eat the pellets and sometimes she won't. But I try to keep hers balanced as well because I don't want her to get so fat that she's difficult to breed. The grass hay that I feed, I get from uh, actually a friend that I went to school with. Uh, he was advertising on Facebook. It's six bucks for a square bale. And that... Granted, I'm going to have more litters now, but that lasts me three weeks or so. Uh, I just give them a handful, and I give the mamas a little bit more, because they'll use some of it for their nesting. And then once the babies start to grow up, the babies will start eating it as well. So the litter that I've got out right now that I'm trying to feed out, uh, I've been trying to just give them grass hay. If I can get my darn tractor done, I'm going to put them out on the tractor, and that's what I'll try to do 
with the litters that I'm feeding out is just tractor feed them as much as possible without a lot of pellets to save some money. So this is the, the grass hay that, that I feed out. And you can see right now, like this is about the handful that I give. And Tina, you can see yesterday, she didn't eat all hers. Uh, I'm going to give her a little bit of fresh. And I suppose this is probably what I'll come back to tomorrow. Whew, there are carpenter bees in here, and I need to spray bad. They're getting a little too close for comfort. Same way with Kim. You can see uh, she doesn't, that's kind of older stuff there. And then Cora, she hasn't really been eating hardly any of hers, um, but she has been eating the pellets more, which seems to be what she does when uh, she's got a litter. But, like, if you look at Pat, I just give him a handful, and that's all fresh today. I'm going to let you guys take a look at Krusty here, and I might need to come up with a new name for her once she gets all healed up. I can still see... She's got a little bit of infection still in this eye. Okay. She's still got, I don't know if you can see the white pus right there in her tear duct. But what she has is an infected tear duct. And this one, you're all right, baby. This one over here is clearing up. She doesn't have any of the white pus coming out. So... I've just been treating her with the saline solution, and, you know, that her tear duct, I mean, obviously, is going to run clear through, just like us. So, this was all just crusty and nasty, and it's, it's starting to clear up really, really well. So, what I've been doing is just, I'll hold her eye open just a little bit, and drop a little bit of that into her tear duct. And when I first started, I was even wiping her tear duct. But it's cleared up so bad that, or cleared up so well that I haven't had to do that. So she does really good. And when I get her out, check her for ear mites, and she's she's good to go. I have had problems with ear mites here before, so I got to stay on top of that with everybody. You can see that uh, crusty, soon to be something else is a real trooper. The dogs are around her and, and she just holds still. I wouldn't do that with the other rabbits because the dogs will scare them pretty bad, but she, she always does awesome every time I give her her treatment. So right now, like I said, I've got two litters and one litter out there that I'll feed out and we'll get them butchered. Tina's litter uh, was born Memorial Weekend, so in three weeks, from that date, I will breed back Tina. I'm going to try to breed her back to Pat. So I'll put her in Pat's cage. I'll put her back in, in into Pat's cage to breed. Because you always want to make sure you put the doe in with the buck. If you put the buck in with the doe, you are going to have problems. They're kind of territorial, actually. Uh, if you've never been around rabbits, rabbits can be aggressive. And, and they can be kind of scary. Um, so always put your doe in with your buck or just put them in a separate cage. People have done that too, but I've never had any problems putting them in with the buck. So I'm going to try Pat. Last time I put a doe in with Pat, he bred once, and then he just like laid there and did nothing. So three weeks or so after the litter's born, you can breed back that doe. In about, I wait six weeks. You could probably, I've heard of people doing it four weeks, but in six weeks you can wean the babies off. So we'll be doing that, and I'll just I'll just keep breeding them back as we go. Hopefully Kim has a litter soon. If not, I'm gonna try to breed her again. If I still don't have any luck, um, I might have to get rid of Kim, one way or another. I don't really at this point want to keep a doe around. That is not producing. So we'll see what happens.